Today I want to show you the 10 most common logo design mistakes that get logos declined on Logo Ground. My name is Andre Leroux. Let's get straight into the video. Before we look at the mistakes, let me explain why this matters. Logo Ground has a points system. You have designer reputation points. The more points you have, the more often Logo Ground will show your logos to potential clients. And the more often clients see your logos, the more often they buy them and the more money you make. So points really matter. More points equal more money. When you upload a logo that is approved on Logo Ground, you gain points. And when you upload a logo that is declined, you lose points. So by simply avoiding the common mistakes that I'm going to show you, you will have more approved logos, fewer declined logos, your points will climb more quickly and you will make more money. Okay, now we are ready. Let's look at the top 10 logo mistakes. Mistake number one, too generic. Here we have a flower, a perfectly pretty and technically well drawn flower, but if I placed this logo among some of its brothers and sisters, it will just melt away. It is in there somewhere, but there isn't much to choose between our logo and all the others. Our logo is that one. There's just nothing special about this logo. It does not have a special character or look or style or theme. It is just another flower logo constructed the same way as thousands of similar flower logos. A logo has to be memorable and this one just isn't. Now, it could be the start of a logo. In fact, it is the same basic structure that we used for the Logo Ground logo. We wanted a flower and also a letter L for Logo Ground. So we started with this type of generic flower shape as the basis for the logo and then worked on it until we had a unique and memorable L flower logo for Logo Ground. You have to put in that extra time and effort to take a generic shape further until it works as a logo. Mistake number two, not enough attention to detail. We want to make money with logos. That's perfectly good and normal. The mistake comes in when we rush to finish a logo so that we can move on to the next one. That is not going to work on Logo Ground. And it's not going to work in life. You have to be proud of every logo you produce. That goes without saying. Here we have a Trident and letter H logo. I quite like it. Uh, perhaps the spacing between the elements could have been more consistent. And these decorative elements down here maybe needed some friends. They seem a bit isolated. But these are not big mistakes. The logo was declined though for something else and maybe you can spot the mistake. It is quite a small detail. If you're watching this on a phone you might not be able to see it. So let's zoom in on the issue. This horizontal line here just barges over the vertical line. Completely unnecessary and very easy to fix. And this tip of the trident is not centered. It's almost in the center, but it might as well be perfectly centered. Aligning stuff is very easy. No excuse for bad alignment. It has to be obvious that your logo was made with great love and care. And that does not mean that you have to spend a lot of time on every logo. Sometimes you mess around for five minutes and it really works and you've got something great and it's awesome when that happens. But when it doesn't, Give the logo as much time and attention as it needs to really be finished, to the point where you can find nothing to improve. Mistake number three, typography. Typography is the art of arranging type. With ready-made logos, the text that you add will be replaced with the client's company name when the logo is purchased. But this is not an excuse to use Arial. You claim to be a designer, you can and you have to do better than Arial. Nothing against Arial exactly, it's a great font, but a client will see this and will think that you are either lazy or an amateur, or both. You have to do better, you have to pay attention to font choice and color and kerning, etc. The text has to be crafted into the logo with care. That will make the entire logo more attractive and it makes it easy for a potential buyer to fall in love with your logo. And if you struggle with typography, browse Logo Ground. There are some beautiful examples of crafted text. Don't copy anything, obviously, but 
you can and you should learn from what the experts are uploading. Mistake number four, ambiguity. What does your logo say? What is the message? This is a tooth logo. There are a number of mistakes here. It is quite generic, uh, not very well balanced and so on. But let's focus on the issue of ambiguity. What does this logo say? The ring of spikes could be interpreted as the sun or a star or perhaps a compass or simply spikes. Most of us don't enjoy going to the dentist. So do we really want a ring of sharp spikes around a tooth? Or an exploding tooth for that matter. I mean, this just looks painful. The message in your logo does not have to be super clever. It can be really simple like speed. That is a message. A delivery company that wants to emphasize that they are speedier than the competition wants that message. So you have a buyer. Speed is enough of a message. If the message is unclear, that is a very hard logo to sell, especially so if there are possible negative interpretations of the message, like we have in our spiky tooth logo. You have to think about and you have to be clear about what your logo says. Now, if your logo is somewhat ambiguous, it might still be approved on logo ground, but it's not going to sell quickly. If selling is what you're interested in, and of course it is, then give your logo a simple, clear and positive message. Mistake number five, inconsistency. In this logo, there are lines and gaps, but the lines are not all the same weight or thickness and the gaps are also different sizes and it doesn't look like there's any good reason for this. Now there is obviously no rule in logo design that says that your lines and gaps have to be perfectly even. You have artistic freedom, you can do whatever you feel like, but inconsistency like this can look like a mistake or it can look like you simply do not care about the details. It feels like sloppy design. This is much better. All the lines and gaps are now neatly evened out and this also works the lines and gaps gradually increasing or decreasing now it looks deliberate and much more attractive mistake number six small details you can have small details in a logo and most of the time that's fine when it is not okay is when the logo cannot function without those small details or when the small details become a bit of a mess when the logo is scaled down. Let's look at four examples and you'll see what I mean. In this first one we have a dual globe logo. Interesting logo and cool colors. There are some very small dots along the edges here. This is not a serious problem. It, if these dots are lost at smaller scale the logo will still work. So we can allow this but it could have been better if those dots were slightly bigger. And the next one, no real issue here. You might think that some of the gaps are too narrow, but with straight lines, you can get away with fairly small details. You'll see at small scale, this logo still works. And another colorful globe. This one has a bunch of lines and the one at the bottom is quite small. This is not ideal, uh, but that line does not present enough of an issue for this logo to be declined on logo ground. It still works reasonably well at small scale. And a phoenix. Um, we have a tiny bit of flame up here. This is completely unnecessary. It, it does not add much. Well, it adds unnecessary clutter. It's just not useful. And the eye of the phoenix is tiny. Both are easy to fix like that. You might think that the lines on top of the wings are too thin, but they're not. Uh, they're fine. At small scale, they will function almost like lines that add shading, even if the individual lines are lost. You'll often notice this effect with very illustrative logos like this one, where you have a lot of fine lines that kind of blend together when the logo is scaled down. And that's fine. It becomes like shading and it's still doing the job it's supposed to do even if the individual lines are no longer visible. Mistake number seven, anatomy. 
There is just no shortcut here guys. If you want to make animal logos or logos with people in them, you have to get the anatomy right. Here we have a cheetah, or so the designer claims. The sharp pointy feet are not the issue. Kudos to the designer for trying to make it unique with pointy feet instead of just a silhouette that anyone can do. The issues are elsewhere. For example, a cheetah has a small head and small ears and a big shoulder hump and a big chest, etc. The second version at the bottom is much better. Now it looks like a cheetah. You might think that if you simplify the design a lot that the anatomy won't matter as much. But that is not the case. It's the opposite. If you want a simple elephant then you have only a few lines to tell your story. A few details that can identify this creature as an elephant. So those details have to be spot on. If it's not spot on you just have a weird creature with a trunk and a tusk, not an elephant. Mistake number eight, variations of the same logo. This is an easy one and in truth we should not even have to discuss this but I'll mention it quickly. When you complete a logo you cannot make variations of that logo and then sell those variations as separate logos. That is not how it works. Not on logo ground and not anywhere. Every logo has to start life on a blank page. If you upload variations of the same logo onto logo ground it will not only be declined it could earn you a warning or in a more extreme case it could even get you banned from lower ground. Blank page please every time. Mistake number nine clip arty. The line between logos and clip art is somewhat blurry. There is a line though and we want to keep our logos on the good side of that line. This phone and heart design is on the bad side. This is more clip art, not a logo. A logo is an image with personality. This image does not have personality. It's just a standard phone and a standard heart. Nothing here that is exciting or even interesting. Let's add some of the highest ranking phone logos from Logo Ground. You'll notice the personality in each one. You can almost give them names and write a little story about each one. They grab our imaginations in a way that clip art does not. Mistake number 10. Bad color choices. Color is subjective and that goes not only for designers but obviously for clients as well. And who knows what colors the client will want. That said, there are some basic principles in color use that we cannot ignore. This is actually not a bad logo, kind of a letter A shape with a circle in perspective and the dot connecting the A and the circle, very nice. And very bad colors. The warm beige background um, makes the gold appear harsh and greenish. And there's not enough contrast between the logo and the background. Seen in black and white, you can see here, there are several points where the logo has the same tonal value as the background. That is no good. Let's try a dark background. Much better. I also moved the logo slightly higher up. It was centered but mathematically centered, not visually centered. We can talk more about that in a future video. Back to color. Avoid super bright distracting backgrounds. It will get attention but not on logo ground. It will not be approved on logo ground. We want the logo to shine, not the background. If you use a gradient, the transition from one color to the next is important. This gradient goes from orange to blue. Now, orange and blue are on opposite sides of the color wheel. And if you go straight from one side of the color wheel to the other, like this, you'll get this muddy gray-brown mess in the middle. Technically that is called a chromatic gray and it's not always a bad thing but handle with care. If you must go from orange to blue, add more colors to your gradient between the two to help guide the color transition. And that's a wrap. That was our top 10 logo mistakes. 
There are many more that I want to show you, but we can cover them in future videos. Be sure to subscribe for that. Thanks for watching.